Tonight, the family of a mother Experts killed during a road the people rage shooting, shooting major in Boston. Yet again, in a minute. Let's start with the caught on camera. We're tracking your morning commute. So far, so good at 6.32. The idea that food plays an essential role in our mental health in the same way that we think about it playing a role in cardiovascular. The coronavirus has changed life as we know it across America. But how did we go from zero cases? The number of Americans filing for first-time unemployment benefits is unfortunately going in the wrong direction. If you are caught using your phone while you're driving, law enforcement will be able to give you a ticket. Mark Thompson following this for us. Social media has gotten to the point where I'm on it all day and I'm like, I'm not having any fun. No. It's really gotten to the point where, what is this experience? Facebook is Something about nightmare. being it's behind the wheel of a car can make normal, everyday people lose it. But what makes someone go from angry to violent? In the U.S., road rage is the cause of approximately 30 murders every year in the U.S. Eight in 10 Americans are involved in road rage behavior at least once a year. Road rage is often listed as an exemption in numerous vehicle insurance policies, leading to zero coverage for road rage-related offenses. Cases involving guns have doubled between 2014 and 2016, reaching 620 in 2016, approximately 47% or 95 million U.S. drivers have yelled at another traffic participant, whereas 45% or 91 million drivers have excessively honked in order to express their anger. Nearly half of all drivers surveyed have experienced some form of road rage. You know, one of the things that people really get angry about, if somebody honks the horn at you because you've sat too long at a light, I think they literally go from the Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde. Unfortunately, on March 25th, 2021, at around 11.15 a.m., Julie Michelle Eberly was one of those road rage-related victims. She was shot and killed while sitting in the passenger seat of her husband's vehicle, Ryan Eberly. Julie and Ryan Eberly were headed from Pennsylvania to South Carolina to celebrate their seventh anniversary last Thursday. Their trip turned deadly after a road rage shooting along I-95 near exit 22 in Lumberton. According to Julie's husband, they were driving on Interstate State 95, just north of Lumberton. They were on their way to the beach to celebrate their wedding anniversary. Ryan was driving in the left lane when he came upon a slower car in the same lane. After a while, when the slower car didn't move to the right lane, he decided to pass on the right. He checked his mirrors before making the move. But Eberly never saw the silver Chevrolet Malibu behind his car, an honest mistake. Next, the Malibu's driver rolled his window down and made a gesture. Eberly responded by making a gesture as well to indicate that he was sorry and moved back into the passing lane, put cruise control back on, kept driving, and thought the incident was over. Minutes later, he noticed the Malibu behind him, following closely. The driver then pulled next to them, rolled down the window, and started shooting. Ryan then looked over and the passenger window was shattered and his wife calling his name. The driver who committed the shooting then speeds off and gets off the next exit. Thankfully, a woman who was also driving on the same road witnessed the incident and calls 911, giving the dispatcher key information about what happened. Um, there's an address. I'm going 95 South. I'm at exit 22. A gray Malibu just fired shots into a white Chevy Suburban. Okay, ma'am. And they exited off of exit 22. I'm on 95 South. I'm in North Carolina. Ma'am, listen, let me ask you a question. Which vehicle got off at 95? The, no, the vehicle got off the exit uh, 22. The vehicle is a Chevy 
Malibu. What color was it? It's a gray Chevy Malibu. Gray Chevy Malibu. You got to hurry up because it fired shots in that truck, and I'm not sure if somebody's hit. We kept driving. Okay, okay. So one vehicle got off at exit 22. Where is the other vehicle? Is it still going 95? The vehicle is... It's still on 95. It pulled over um, right before the exit 22. Okay, so okay, so what was the car that, that the gray Chevy Malibu was the one that was shooting at the other car? What was the other car? Yes, ma'am. What was the other car? It's a white Chevy Suburban. Okay, so the white Chevy Suburban was it's the a, one. Oh, you can my, oh, my husband said it was a GMC Yukon. They look the same. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. I can understand it gets confusing. Okay, so my question yes. is, okay, okay so the, the gray Chevy Malibu was shooting at the people in the white uh, Yukon, correct? Yes, ma'am. And the white Yukon pulled over before exit 22. Okay. How far do you I'm think in, that? I'm in North Carolina. Yes, ma'am. I get you. How far do you think that before the exit they pulled over? Uh, maybe a quarter mile, not even far. Okay. Uh, because as soon as the sh the soon as the, the vehicle shot, they exited off the ramp, off the next exit. Okay. Give me We're just going a, south. We're you, going south. Ma'am, stay on the line with me just a second, okay? Let me get the police on the way. Like the witness said, Ryan pulled over to the side of the road and calls 911 as well. <laughs> Robinson County 911, what's his application of your emergency? I don't know, I'm along 95 South, I can't see an exit on my own Okay. Shot into my car. My wife's okay, sir, I can't. You said somebody shot into your car? Shot into my car, yes. My wife is shot. She's bleeding badly. I need okay, help listen, now. Okay, listen to me. I need you to take a breath, okay? I'm showing you're at my marker 22 in the southbound lane. Are you southbound lane? Southbound lane. Please hurry. Okay, what is, your, what is your name, sir? Ryan Everly. Okay, what is your phone number in case we get disconnected, Brian? Seven one seven nine five. Okay, where is your wife shot at? She's shot in the hip. I'm trying to stop the bleeding. Okay, do you have a clean, dry cloth? I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to put, hang on. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. How old is your wife? Yes, I have a, I have a clean ah, Okay, well, yes, I can hear you. How old is your wife? She's not responsive. Should I lay her down or? How old is she? What? How old is your wife? She's 47. Okay. Is she breathing? Yes, she's breathing, but very labored. Okay. Is she conscious? Uh, here. Is she no, conscious? She's not, she's not conscious. She's okay. Please hurry. Okay, listen to me. We need to get her flat on her back, okay? Is there any way that you can get her out of the car? Yes, I can. I got to set my phone down. Hang on. Okay. I got a subject shot on 95. I'm right here. Just hang on. Okay, I'm still here with you, sir. Okay, what kind of vehicle are you in so I can feel the ambulance? What? What kind of vehicle are you in? I'm in a white GMC Yukon XL. Keep breathing, dear. I'm right here. We got help. Please hurry. Not okay, they're coming just as fast as they can, sir. We got help on the way. Okay, is she breathing? Yes, she's breathing. Very, very labored. Okay. Breathing. Okay. Is her is your flashers on? Yes, my flashers are. I don't. I don't know. I think my turn signal's on. Okay. Can you put your flashers on right fast so they can spot you easier? Let me know when you've done that. My my flashers are on. Okay. Flashers are on. Okay. What we need to do is we need to tilt her head back to keep her airway open so we can keep her breathing. Okay. 
What I need you to do is take that clean, dry cloth and apply pressure to her wound. Can you do that for me? Did you have you got that yeah, applying yeah, pressure? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Listen to me, you're doing a really good job. I need you to try to stay under control, okay? You're doing a really good job and we've got help coming to you. Is she talking to you? Yeah. Sir? <laughs> Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Is her chest rising and falling? Joy, please. Please, sir. Honey. Is her chest rising and falling? Yes, she's taking very, very shallow labored breaths. Okay. What kind of vehicle was it that shot at you? I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I don't know. A silver sedan or a white sedan? Keep breathing, Joey. Keep breathing. Did you see the people in the vehicle that shot at you? It was a black gentleman, single person, one black gentleman. Well, not a gentleman. He shot my freaking car. My wife. Okay. Is she still breathing? Very, very shallow. Very shallow. Okay. They're coming just as fast as they can. Is her head tilted back to open up her airway? Her, her airway is open. Okay, her She's airway going. is open. Are you I'm still applying pressure to the wound? I got pressure on the wound. Okay, keep that pressure on the wound. Do not lift up. Do not look at it, okay? I'm... <laughs> You're doing a good job, sir. And help's <laughs> on the way, Ryan, okay? We've got several units en route to you. They're going northbound. I'm on southbound. They were going northbound? Yes. Okay, he's southbound. Do what? No, he's, he's saying they're passing him. <laughs> Jolie, keep breathing. Honey, breathe. Breathe, Jolie. Is she a conscious? No, she's not conscious. Conscious. Okay. Keep breathing. Keep breathing, Jolie. Very, very slow and labored. Oh, my God. Okay, they're coming just as fast as they can to you, okay? Stay on the line with me. You're doing a good job. Please. <laughs> Keep breathing. Keep breathing, Jolie. I mean, breathe. Breathe. She's still breathing. I can't tell. Breathing. Okay, listen to me. Is her chest rising and falling? Sir. I don't see any movement. Okay, put your put your head put your face to her face and tell me what you feel or hear. She's not breathing. She's not breathing. Oh my God. She's not breathing at all. I'm gonna give her mouth to mouth. Okay, we need to start. We need to start CPR. Do you know how to do CPR, sir? How many contractions do I do? Okay, you're gonna do it. Well, you're gonna listen to me. You're gonna do compressions until somebody gets there. You're gonna do. Comp you're going to listen, listen to me. You're going to do chest compressions until somebody gets there. Do you know how to do CPR? Yes, yeah, just above her okay. sternum. How many? How many in a row? As many, as many as you can in a row. Keep going. Just count them out loud for me. Hurry up. Okay, they're coming just as fast as they can. Keep counting out loud the CPR number. Can you count out loud for me so I can keep up with you? 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 46, give it a breath. No, 
Yes, sir. Just keep doing chest compressions. Okay, sir. You did a good job. Keep going, sir. They're coming, sir. They're coming just as fast as they can. I need you to continue CPR, sir. Do you see the officer, sir? What? Do you see the officer? There's no officer here. Okay, keep doing CPR, sir. Is she breathing it out? Is she breathing it out? Okay, sir. Listen to me. We're helping you. We're trying to help you, okay? Do you see the officer? No, there's no officer yet. He's saying no officer yet. Okay, let me know as soon as you see someone pull up, okay? Just continue CPR and count out loud for me. The officer's here. The officer's there? Okay. Let me know when he's beside you. I can't hear you. Please talk okay. I'm going to let you go now, okay? The officer's there to help you. I'm going to let you go. Help me! Julie Eberly was taken to UNC Southeastern Hospital, where she later died. Her husband, Ryan, was devastated. In an interview, he said, we want to tell Julie's story in the hope that someone somewhere will come forward who knows the individual who took the cowardly action of firing a gun from a moving car into another vehicle. Finding this person won't bring Julie back, but it will provide justice for Julie and prevent this from happening to anyone else. It will also provide comfort and a bit of closure for Julie's family. Investigators then launch the manhunt for the person that committed such a heinous crime. There's a $10,000 reward to find the driver connected to a deadly road rage shooting. Uh, the car was last seen heading southbound toward exit 22 into Lumberton. Again, there is a $10,000 reward for any information that leads to an arrest and conviction in this case. With cameras nowadays being everywhere, law enforcement in North Carolina were able to obtain a video of a gray Malibu vehicle getting on I-95 at Interchange 25 and exiting at Exit 22. They also managed to capture surveillance footage provided by dozens of businesses and residents that helped track the Malibu's path before and after the shooting, which led to the capture of the shooter. At about 12.38 a.m. on April 1st, 29-year-old Dewan R. Floyd Floyd of Lumberton was arrested at the Parkview Apartments. Dejuan Floyd was arrested around 12.30 this morning at Parkview Terrace Apartments in Lumberton. Floyd is charged with first-degree murder for the death of Julie Everly. The sheriff says dozens of businesses and people living here gave surveillance video to investigators, which helped track Floyd's path in Cumberland and Robeson counties, both before and after the shooting. He was charged with first-degree murder and discharging a weapon into an occupied property. He was denied bond. Further sentencing is still pending. Investigators said that the Malibu that Floyd drove while allegedly committing the crime was mostly left the same, with only minor modifications made to it, such as taking the window tint off and removing a few stickers on it, attempts to diminish the appearance of the vehicle. They also said that Floyd was still driving the car, thinking he would never get caught. At the time of the arrest, Sheriff Burness Wilkins said, I was there that morning just after midnight when we arrested him and just to look at the cold face that he's got. His nonchalant, I don't care that I'm getting arrested look. I can only imagine what these folks saw out there in I-95 when he looked over and shot. It actually makes you angry. Floyd had a lengthy criminal record too. 
Previous charges included larceny of a motor vehicle, larceny of firearms, felony breaking and entering, and assault. Records from the North Carolina Department of Corrections show he was released from prison in 2018. Sheriff Bernice Wilkins said he wasn't happy to see this lengthy record. In this particular case, you're talking about a convicted felon who wasn't supposed to have a gun to start with. When you look over his criminal record, in my opinion, he shouldn't ever have been out of prison to start with. But now, we're having to deal with this all over again, and this led to a murder. 47-year-old Julie Michelle Eberly leaves behind her six children, husband, and friends. Ryan said that Julie made it her mission to open their home to friends, family, and neighbors. It was her joy to have these people around her and bless them with her hospitality. Julie's roots of faith grew deep. She was involved in several prayer ministries and deeply passionate in helping people find healing. Everyone who knew her enjoyed her joy for life and positive spirit. Her distinct laugh still echoes in the hearts of everyone she touched. Even in the midst of this horrific tragedy, we are seeing the hand of God through the care and concern of many individuals. On April 9th, a celebration of Julie's life was broadcast with family and friends expressing their love for an angel. That hope is why the Eberly family is looking for this service to be one that celebrates Julie's life. Ryan had prayed for a long time that the Lord would introduce him to his life partner. To take it slow. I, on the other hand, told him to follow his heart. It breaks my heart that Ryan has lost his best friend and wife. Someone shared with me some words of comfort this past week. When we lose someone we love, we must learn not to live without them, but to live with the love they've left behind. Um, and just say thanks. I mean, what else can you say? But it, it's humbling for what you, what you have done. Through Barb, she talked about Barb a lot, so bless you, Barb. You, you really did help to lead through some of those years. Of, and the Holy Spirit grew and grew in Julie's life. And, and we were there when the dollar was very slim in her pocketbook. But she'd help, she'd take Maddie out to eat. <laughs> she was a beautiful woman. My prayer is that her legacy will live on through all of us as we prayerfully trust God, being kind, compassionate, and generous towards one another. And, and everybody's story says the same thing. Um, it, it's, it's Julie had, if she just was a simple person, didn't overcomplicate things, didn't overcomplicate her faith, didn't overcomplicate anything. And uh, a lady shared with my mom something that just dropped into her. If you use Julie's name as an acronym, just use love in everything. That's who she was. So for us, as we get to continue life, let us remember her by just using love in everything.